Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Podcast Network Asia. Network Asia. This episode includes a discussion on suicide. If you or someone you know is in crisis, please know that there is help available. The National Center for Mental Health Crisis Hotline operates 24-7 to provide assistance. You can reach them at 0917-899-8727 and 0917-989-8727. For many years, Catholic Church had a very definite answer of yes, they will go to hell. Until the science came out that not all suicides are suicides out of hatred for life, but it is a mental health issue. The reason why we believe that you will not go directly to hell is because in the book of Revelation, there is a time of judgment wherein Satan, together with the evil spirits and the people that belong to him, will be thrown into the fire lake of the burning sulfur. Si God kasi, he judges us based on light of what we know. An example of that, sinabi sa Bible, that there will be a greater level of strictness or judgment sa mga teachers. Kasi mas marami kayong alam eh. Di ba? So, naniniwala ako that when the time comes, God will be the judge. What I find interesting is I think through doing this podcast, I've come to the realization that first of all, when you say you're a good person, by whose standard are you good? Well, hello boys and girls and welcome to the Narrow Door Podcast. Brother G, are you fixing your microphone? Ruining my intro. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to another episode of the Narrow Door Podcast. Thank you for joining us on YouTube, on Spotify, wherever you get your show. My name is Sam O, and Tina Ryan is not joining us today. However, we have three lovely gentlemen who are with us, and I get to be the rose among the thorns. Mm-hmm. It's probably more like thorn among the roses, and the That's roses right. are <laughs> Brother J. Paul Hernandez, who is lay preacher at the feast. We have instructor Harold Rescher, who is instructor at New Heaven and New Earth, Shinchandi Church of Jesus. And from Victory Makati, we have Pastor Neil Germo. Welcome, everyone. We have a kind of a serious topic today, um, and I think it could be in line with what's going on right now. We are recording this on August 6th, which is day one of ECQ season three. A lot of people are having difficulty uh, dealing with this constant. I, you know, what I think is difficult about it too is we see a glimmer of hope at some point because, oh, things start opening up. The numbers are going down. Oh my goodness, is this it? And then we go back into lockdown again. And yeah. we've had a few cycles of this. And I can see how this could be difficult for a lot of people. It's of course, just hard. For example, uh, you know, we there's so many people are dying again. Like our my Theo prof, uh, taking masters in theology, and our professor and the dean of the school passed away because of COVID. So but uh our, so like kanin, this morning, actually, we're receiving the, the new readings for next week. And um, I'm your new prof. So, you know, there's a heartbreak in that because you're learning about God from somebody who knows, you know, the word of God. So parang, I mean, I'm still excited to learn. Mas, you know, you're human. Eh, may kirot. And like um, to, from yesterday to today, um, from our at least our feast district that's a collection of um, different feasts around the area so I'm in Green, the Ortigas area so many so many of our volunteers are passing away so parang okay sunod-sunod like at least in, in Green Hills the one I'm handling we're gonna have three farewells next week like family farewells so parang and that's wala pa yung bukas you like that's the that's what I've received right now um, stuff like that. It's hard, truly. It's really ha- hard in a sense. But I guess uh, on a spiritual note, this pandemic has forced me to really trust God. And I'm not yet childlike dependent, but I'm get I I, I mean a few steps better than before. Yeah. So I, at least in my faith life, my faith life has been growing. Because I have a choice ako, eh, to grumble or trust God. So it's peaceful yung trust God. <laughs> um, your dean 
in your school is this Father Mike Laguardia? Yes, Father Michael Laguardia. Yep, yep. he's am... very beloved. He's a beloved priest um, all around the, the feast also. Because, alam mo Sam yung mga divine intimacy and lavish of love na sinasabi ko sa podcast. Sa kanya ko nakuha yun eh. mm-hmm. because during our retreats he would lead us to to intimacy with God, and that's where my heart also. But I mean spiritually. He has helped me so much and we really miss him. All the feasts will miss him. And he has led so many people back to Jesus. Um, not just Catholics because he's a theo- theology prof. So there are non-Catholics studying in their school. So, Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that I'm so sorry for your loss. I've never met him, but I knew of him. And I know friends who loved him. Yeah, And I I'm just sure. wanted to say, yeah, I am so sorry for this loss of yours. Yeah, so another round of ECQ. So, sa bahay lahat. Pero, ano eh, like, with all the challenges and uncertainties, uh, I'm just, ano, I'm just grateful to God for sustaining me and also the people He has surrounded me with. Kasi pagka you see things with what's happening and you focus on it, alam mo yun, there would be, ano eh, mag- momentum na yung doubt, yung fear, yung worry, which is valid yun. Pero kasi, parang, I'm just grateful to God kasi parang, Lord, grabe, no? even at this time where it is a global pandemic, diba? we have a uh, health crisis, tapos may financial crisis. Ano rin eh, we have a tendency to make this a faith crisis. Eh. Pero, naniniwala ako na, si Lord talaga yung hindi bumibitaw. Even if there are times na, may times na, Lord, pas, hirap naman ito. Pero, I'm just grateful to God. He, wala. Hindi niya lang ako iniiwan. And also, mga friends ko who are there for me. So, okay. yun lang. Thank God. Thank God for for the grace. And thank yeah. you for the technology. Kasi even in, in spite of all that's happening, I mean, tayo, hindi naman tayo magkakasama ngayon physically, but we have this opportunity to talk about these things. So, uh, hindi kasi lahat negative eh. There are still things to be grateful for. So, madami. So, Absolutely. it's a choice that we need to make. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that, Pastor Neil. It's very important for us to be grateful at this time, despite the many negative things happening around us. And uh, I think it's also important for us to hold on to that silver lining that one day it would, it would end. We just have to cooperate. We just have to be more patient. Um, we really have to endure during this time, during these difficult trials that we're going through right now. And uh, I believe the best way to really hold on to our faith um, is to go back to God and really seek Him during this time and thank God for this um, technology like what Pastor Neil mentioned because without this, maybe that's more difficult for us to stay alone inside our houses, not being able to meet new people, not being able to do other things for us to somehow release the stress. So yeah, um, there are so many things that we can be grateful for. It's just that we have, it's like um, the analogy of we have the a magnifying glass in our own hands. It's up to you what we'll magnify. Is it about the problems that we have right now or is it about God who is working in our lives at Facts. this moment? Preacher! Wow. Yeah. Okay. We get to choose what we get to magnify in our lives. Good stuff, guys. Yeah. Okay. So as I said earlier, we have a pretty serious topic today. And this one is coming from Carmela. She is a doctor. And are you guys ready to hear the message that she sent us? Nope. Okay. Brother J. Paul shaking his head. I'm going to go anyway. All right. <laughs> Carmela says... <laughs> Hi, Sam. I'm a Catholic who is rediscovering her faith. I have so many questions about the Christian life, and it is interesting to see that some of your guests in the podcast have the same questions as I have. Also, I have been learning a lot from the panel who get to answer these questions. It is very interesting to hear them speak about Christian ideologies from different religious perspectives. I have been diagnosed with persistent depression in 2019. I went through medication and psychotherapy. I have recovered. It has been a difficult journey for me, but so far, I am doing well. As someone who almost took her own life in the past, my question is, where do the souls of those who committed suicide go? Do they go to hell? 
I used to hear people say that if you commit suicide, you go to hell. But I have heard about really good people who took their own lives for several different reasons. So will their souls go to hell then, even if they were really good and kind-hearted while they were still alive? I believe that God is a loving and forgiving God, but what will He do about those who chose to end their own lives? Thank you for your time. Thank you for inspiring me to work harder in learning about the Christian faith. Wishing you all the best. That is coming from Doc Carmela. Yeah. Uh, I I mean, I don't think it's... um, Like, it's across the board, right? All, like, the Christian belief is that taking your own life is a sin. Yes. It's obviously not going to make God happy. Right? Yes. I mean, that's what we believe in, yeah. uh -uh. Uh-uh. I think the maybe do they automatically go to hell is maybe the question that we need to discuss. Is that the teaching? You can go ahead, Sari. Kasi mukhang may sabihin ka na eh. Actually, hindi. Gusto ko muna marinig yung sa inyo kasi my answer could be uh, a bit different. All so right. I'm interested to listen to what you okay. guys I'll, I'll go first. Uh, kasi for, for many years, Catholic, Catholic Church had a very definite answer of yes, they will go to hell. Kasi ganun nga, life eh. Life is diba, special to us, ganyan, ganyan. Until the science came out that not all suicides are suicides out of hatred for life, but it is a mental health issue or it stems from mental health. And because of the Catholic Church, uh, moral theology or morality comes from the natural science or we understand, we respect the naturalness of the world, we have come to realize and parang binalik ng Catholic Church yung stance na wait, case-to-case basis pala. Kasi naman, baka may ganitong concern. So, maybe not. But at the end of the day, it's still all, everyone that goes to God is still Jesus eh. Si Jesus lang yan eh. Pero more of how we understood suicide, yun yung mas masasagot ko nga. Naakala natin dati because it was just outright, oh, parang tanggal buhay pa sa mga katao. Hindi pala. The church has fig, um, um, changed its stance on it because as uh, as we have learned more about mental health, psy- psychology, psychiatry, um, so I would suggest nga also to doc is, um, she's a doctor, so mayroon siya magbasa. So she can read Summa Theologica by uh, Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, because ano eh, um, because may intindihan niya because of her background, may intindihan niya yung because she he writes somewhere there about how matters of how matter affects matter, etc. But at the end of the day, it's still about the will of God. So, wala tayong exact. Eto mga yari. But that's I'm just sharing where at least the Catholic Church has moved throughout the decades. Interesting. Yeah. I think it's like, yes, committing suicide is a mortal sin. When What is a mortal sin is when you willfully do something knowing that it's a sin, right? Yeah. Which makes it grave. However, in the case of somebody who has a mental condition, they're their ability to make judgments and decisions is impaired. Mm. So then how can you say that they willfully did that knowing yeah. that it was wrong? So that it, it's like grayer now. It's not as black and white as we yeah. used to think. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and also, also Neil, we don't know, naman, sorry, just before Pastor Neil comes in, we still see Lord yung may last, <laughs> siya yung may last, uh-huh. last say. We are just in understanding what, what the word and what has life um, exposed to us. Anyway, go sure. ahead, Pastor Nila. So, hindi, sige, Instahari, alam ko, sagot na, sagot na si Instahari eh. Instahari. Hindi, sige, sige. I, I agree dun sa sinabi na Brother Jay na at the end of the day, it's God who will judge us. So, wala naman sa atin yung decision na, oh, ikaw punta ka sa hell or ikaw pupunta ka sa heaven. Uh, but going back to the question of um, would someone who committed suicide go to hell directly? That's a question, right? Yeah. Okay. 
um, the way we understand it, uh, first, I want to establish that, yes, we understand it as a sin because anything that we do that will make us away from God is a sin. And God is the giver of life. And he doesn't want us to take this um, and commit suicide. So um, for me, it's a sin. And uh, this sin would... Um, would still be forgiven. That's the way we understand it. Remember when we discussed before that there's only one sin that God cannot forgive. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 31, only the blasphemy or, of the spirit or the sin against the spirit is the only sin that cannot be forgiven by God. But anything else, for as long as we ask forgiveness from God, then um, he can forgive us. So, okay, yeah. Uh, sure. Sorry. Yeah. No, 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 go yes, I, I do remember that conversation. And the, the whole like blasphemy of the spirit has come up a few times on the show. Honestly, I'm I feel like there's different understandings on this, although I think it was Brother J. Paul who said that it's willfully rejecting God. Yun ba yung blasphemy of the spirit, the way we understand it, Brother J. Yun ba yun? <laughs> oh, was it not? Choppy, 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 choppy. Um, um, I thought I, I think, it was you, yeah. yeah. But parang, uh, it is yung basically mortals, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, in a sense, one side of it. Pero kasi like, what, I think what I said, if I remember it correctly, mahirap, kasi diba for um, brothers, may, sa Catholics, we, meron kaming categories of sin. So parang we understood yung... Um, the mortal sin as mortal. Kasi the most sin, majority of our sins, yeah, I watched porn, it's because may brokenness ako. We, we, nagnakaw ako kasi gutom yung pamilya ko. Hindi ka talaga truly evil. Um, but yung karang ganyang klaseng sin, it's because you're really, yung mortal, mortal, mortal sin is because gusto mo mag against God. It's like the same sin again, like the devil, kasi nga, the devil, para ano yung kanyang sin against the flesh, or sin against the flesh, sins against the spirit, is because he rejected, obi- uh, he did not submit to God's divinity. Eh. So, mm-hmm. kaya siya, parang anytime a sin looks like that, that it is rejecting the glory of God in your life, medyo nagiging ganun yung sin mo. Hirap okay. ng sin usapan eh, no? Yun nga eh, and, and I interject that because I feel like, is that a topic, like a future topic? Anyway, I'm so sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's a Harry. Go ahead. It's somehow like that. You will fully reject God because who is God? God is the Word. And in John chapter 6, verse 63, this Word is also the Spirit. So if we do not know the Word, then can't we consider that as a blasphemy or that is against the Spirit? Because from the day one of the podcast, I've been mentioning how important it is for us to know. You have? <laughs> just kidding. Hindi naman. Parang di obvious. Na, joke lang. Joke lang. Um, what, on the 110th time, <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've been telling our listeners that it's important for us to know God's word because if we fail to do that, yes. we might be rejecting God without even realizing it. Yun. Diba? Because... It always boils down to the importance of the word, importance of understanding it because God is the word and God is spirit. So for us, it's connected actually. And uh, yun, and that's why I really want to encourage everyone for us to take time, especially ECQ. So I think we have more time to spend inside our houses. So why not you study the Bible or yeah, do other things that you think would make you productive? And closer yep. to God. Yep, I second the motion. Um, so you were saying that. Sorry, before we got into this whole like blasphemy against the spirit thing, your stance is that this is a sin, but it's not the sin that God said in the Bible will not be forgiven. Mm, yes. So yes, biblically yes. speaking, this can be forgiven. Yes. Right. 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 Okay. Pastor Neil. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, uh, Insta Harry and Brother Paul, J. Paul, for that. So, for me, uh, naniniwala kasi ako sa ano eh, na yung, of course we know, we all agree, di ba? Si Jesus rin naman talaga ang magkoconnect sa atin kay God the Father. And I think there's no sin too great na God cannot forgive. And kasama dun yung ano, yung uh, suicide, right? Uh, pero aside kasi for me 
pag ganyan yung question, maganda maganda din sinabi ni na ano eh, ni na Brother J Paul and Insta Harry. At the end of the day, it's really God eh, yung makakapag-judge kung saan eh. Ito kasi, I mean, it's a probably a curious question, but I'd like to take a step back wherein saan nang galing yung tanong? And pwede kasing, okay, is it because out of hopelessness, out of despair, or maybe because uh, since diba yung nag-ask ng question is a doctor at minsan nga may mga cases na wala talaga eh, it's a medical condition. Ako, babalik kasi ako, how I understand God, how I know in the scriptures, at least pagkaintindi ko, si God kasi, He judges us based on light of what we know. Kasi diba, an example of that, sinabi sa Bible that there will be a greater level of strictness or judgment sa mga teachers. Kasi mas marami kayong alam eh. Diba? So, naniniwala ako that when the time comes, God will be the judge. And sometimes kasi nandito tayo sa ano, oh, grabe naman, bakit ganun si God? Kung ito yung panig mo, ito. Pero, ano eh, at the end of the day, siya talaga yung pinaka pinakatamang makakapag-judge. And of course, we all know naman, because of the sinful nature that we got, because of kay Adam, and also the things that we do, sinabi sa scripture, and gagayahin ko si, uh, si Instahari, di ba, sa Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Pero, yun nga eh, parang, it will just be like a full of discussion, and it's healthy, Pero at the end of the day, we want to point people who are going through this na there is always hope. And that hope is really kay Jesus. That no matter what happens, no matter the situation, alam natin at the end of the day, my hope in God. And and of course, ano yan eh, uh, mahirap talaga yan, especially it can be clinically speaking na yung case Pero may grace pa rin doon. Naniniwala ako may, may grace pa rin doon. Especially if you allow yourself na to be open. Kasi minsan may grace naman na si Lord para matulungan ka. People are messaging you. Pero alam mo yun, yung parang sometimes we just choose to amplify and not uh, kumbaga, get the help na binibigay ng mga ibang tao. So, uh, especially yung question na to, very, ano eh, it reflects a lot of what people are going through, especially ngayon, may third season of ECQ is, if there are times that if we feel like we are hopeless, or wala na ano, there's always hope in Jesus, na kahit feeling natin, wala na, dead end, whether financially, whether emotionally, spiritually, at the end of the day, may hope in Jesus eh. Just to give a story, um, I have a friend who has gone through that. Depressed, uh, suicide na. Tapos, yung way niya para mag-suicide is tatalan sa building. Pero at that very moment, biglang nagparamdam si God. Sabi, you have been doing your own way. Try my way. This. In an instant, parang nagkaroon ng, alam mo yung joy, ng peace and love. Then, dun niya nakilala si Lord, naging Christian siya. So, yun yung at least the stories that I know from my friends na sometimes kasi it's really hopeless eh, pero let's be open on how God will intervene. And nandiyan naman rin si God for us. Mm. So, yun. That's it. Wow. Wow. Can I just add to what we were discussing a while ago? No! Because... Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll leave. <laughs> no, be, oh, no, leave ka, <laughs> Uh, no, because I, I agree with uh, what Pastor Neil mentioned that um, God would, I mean, I, I can't <laughs> I can't quote what exactly he meant, but I, I remember a verse. Remember my life verse, Acts, Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Be Mas like alam ko may beray yan yun. Oh, uh, yun, 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 yun. <laughs> Ay, hindi ba Genesis 1-1 in the beginning? <laughs> Ay, hindi, hindi. Sorry, ba- but, bago lang pala ako dito so hindi ko alam sorry, <laughs> sorry uh, Pastor Neil Revelation 1 po si Ay, Revelation uh, oh. Oh, the revelation of Jesus Christ no. <laughs> but kasi on that same chapter it explains that God overlooked the ignorance of the people but God would want them to repent by knowing it so kaya 
I, I just want to go back dun sa God is giving us the chance to know and to understand and to just also connect to the other um, thing that we are discussing about would someone go to um, hell directly if he commits suicide. Um, in the Bible, there is no like a direct verse saying na directly mapupunta ka na sa hell. But um, just like what we are mentioning earlier, aside from God is the one who would judge us. We also know that God is merciful and God is just. So with this mercy, what we understand is He can give us a chance. He can give us a chance even though we already died because um, since God and Jesus are working just like when uh, approximately 2,000 years ago um, when Jesus was being persecuted by the Pharisees, teachers of the law, because he's working during the Sabbath. And then Jesus mentioned that my father is working, and so I am working as well. Because even when Jesus died and resurrected, he actually went to what we call as prison in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 to 19, wherein um, he resurrected in spirit, and then he is preaching in the spirit in prison. So the way we understand it, it's not a physical prison where Jesus is preaching, but he's preaching to the spirit, meaning even when our physical flesh died, physical na nga flesh pa, <laughs> even our physical body died, our spirit can still have a chance to listen because uh, Jesus was preaching there. And um, the reason why we believe that you will not go directly to hell is because in the book of Revelation, there is a time of judgment wherein Satan, together with the evil spirits and the people that belong to him, will be thrown into the fire lake of the burning sulfur. So um, I just want to put it out there. Balik isik na naman and all. But remember yung story ni Martha at saka ni Mary when Jesus was there as their visitor. And Martha was so anxious with so many things. She was preparing so many things for Jesus, which is not bad. Kasi bisita mo si Jesus lang naman yun. But what Jesus told Martha is that what Mary is doing, listening to his words, that's something that is more important and that's something that will not be taken away from her. And so ako, I remind myself that during this time of difficulties, I would rather go back to listen and to meditate on God's word because this is something that will not be taken away from me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as someone who's doing Bible class right now too, it's it helps me tremendously and it comforts me so much. Um, what about you guys, Pastor Neil and Brother Jay? How are you guys keeping it together? Just as human beings, not as pastors or preachers, you know? Ah, uh, perfect pala kami, by the way. Hindi, hindi, joke lang. Si Insta Hari lang pala. Si, si Insta Hari lang pala yun. Next to Jesus. So, Jesus, Insta Hari na. So, yun. Yeah. <laughs> joke lang. So, I, I think maganda yung ano, ano, like the question is, how are we holding up? Uh, I think before I, I say the answer to that is, there are times that we're not holding up. There are times that we're not okay. And it's okay not to be okay. Like the K-drama! But, okay, sorry. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> but, you should not stay there. There will be times that you feel mo talaga yan. There will be times that reality will sink in. Na ganito yung nangyayari. Plans are not panning out. Pero dun ka babalik na lagi may hope. Kasi, alam mo, nandiyan si Jesus eh. So, what's helping me is there are times na hindi rin ako okay. Mukha lang okay kasi parang poker face or parang <laughs> or kailangan mo kasi mag-encourage eh. Kung baga parang the wounded healer. Yan. Hindi, pero, <laughs> di ba? It's, it's really important that you have aside from your relationship with God kasi yung, yun yung basic eh, is God is our Heavenly Father where you can run to Him, you can go to Him without filters kasi minsan tingin natin kay God parang, Lord, sana po uh, matupad na yung uh, prayer ko, magsa bahay. Alam mo yun, lumapit ka kay God, un- yung raw, unfiltered, Lord, ang sakit, nakakainis, nawala na naman akong trabaho. Punta kay Lord, buhos mo doon. So, that's helping me. Pangalawa is, also, you need to really have people. So, if you are part of a church or hindi ka part of a church, I hope that you join small groups. Uh, in our church, we call it victory groups. 
uh, please do kasi they are the people who God will send in your life na matulungan ka and hindi ko sinasabi na perfect yung mga tao na makakasama mo ma-offend ka rin nila kasi they are also broken people but at least you have people who can pray for you who can pick you up when you're down and I think yun yung nakatulong sa akin is just really the grace of God and just the relationship na alam ko at the end of the day kasama ko si Lord and of course the people and you need to be vulnerable mm-hmm. sa kanila so yeah. yeah 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 and we did topics on this this you know shows on this like why it's important to be part of a church even if sometimes they're the ones that stumble us um brother J <laughs> yeah Oh man, it's really hard. Uh, I guess I mean at least at the time of recording, parang I'm flooded like with so many problems, and it's not a personal problem, pero like with yung responsibility as my brothers would understand. Yung parang kinakabahan ka buksan yung phone mo, <laughs> kasi alam mo may bagong may update, may ganito. So so may ganon and and just like uh, oh really hard and 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 dami talagang problems and funny thing is life has so many problems so that's it i mean it's just taking it day by day and really seriously talagang the ultimate prayer lord i don't know what to do help me mm. <laughs> so so yan so parang yun yung pinaka prayer ko every day <laughs> talagang kapit lang kay god talaga yan no? <laughs> Oh, all of us, different versions. Yung, yung, yeah, it's like, it's like ganun. Yung, depende sa problem, kano kalakas yung boses ko, tsaka yung piyok ko, ganun. Um, <laughs> but there's something that really made me smile um, recently, or today, this morning, actually. Parang, hindi yung problem, but I was smiling this morning because um, Viv encouraged her mom and their siblings to record something. Kaya bila, bago mamat, yung asawa ko medyo morbid, pag uwi mo ba tayo, mag-record kayo, parang gumanyan. Oh my ah, gosh, man! Iba, ibang lugar sila. And sobrang blessing, the cousin of my wife is a recording person, si Barbiel Malbis. So sakto, and she was our guest at one episode, sakto yung kanyang, um, basta may concert show or something na na-cancel because of the pandemic. So now, sobrang tuwan-tuwa yung magkakapatid. Uh, Viv's mom, Barbie's mom, and my uh, other siblings sila from all over the world. So Barbie is like doing online, recording them online. Tapos siya yung nagmi-mix nung kanta para meron daw silang unified song by by ano, by ano a few months from. Sabi ko, sobrang happy ko. Kasi parang sabi namin, that is what God wants. Eh. This is what, how how parang a small church family is a church. And, and we may be separated, but but that that a uh, 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 fun loving music that you know somebody is uh, appreciating each other's gifts that is that's joy eh? no? parang god is in the beauty of things even when things are ugly and that's just how i felt that lord just really was grateful for that moment mm-hmm. and and for, for for families getting together and you know this morning yeah on a late kasi si Viv nang ginagamit yung computer may ni-record siyang kan part ng kanta niya so kami ni Gray to shut my son up. Nakiyakap lang ako sa kanya. <laughs> Buong part ng umaga kasi kailangan kasi maingay. So I have to be really quiet. So, it's not exciting. I mean, it's not like like exciting in a sense. Wala siyang action movie explosions. It's quiet joy that I hold on to because I know these moments are priceless. It's a gift from God. And these gifts and moments from God cannot be the devil cannot touch it these these family moments belong to god and and the, the, the devil cannot touch that part of the family oh wow these are very powerful answers guys and i'm looking forward to that video that's probably our next viral video on youtube everyone watch I, it I really upload. Parang it's for I the family na... are you serious okay um going back to carmela's message I because I found because it's there's a second question to this message, which is if these people who took their own lives, which yes, we all know is a sin, now will that directly merit them hell? That's up in the air. We don't know that. And I don't think that is the teaching. But what about if these people were good, kind-hearted people? Would that still be the judgment on what they did? 
And what I find interesting is I think through doing this podcast, I've come to the realization that first of all, when you say you're a good person, by whose standard are you good? Because we can, you know, it's so easy to label somebody. A good- <laughs> if you're on YouTube, I'm getting like standing so cl- slow claps from Brother J. Paul and his dairy. And now <laughs> Pastor Neil. <laughs> But you know, it's easy to label somebody good, but uh, it's a bit more than that. Yeah. It's, it, it's more than being nice. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, so I guess maybe we could get into that a little bit. Sure. What, what do you guys think? Ay, that's so amazing. So you know, I'm not going to say it, but ang ganda, Sam, and you're really like a preacher now. Yes. Um, no, these, not. I remember because <laughs> Pastor Sam. Neil, nung binubring up namin to last year nila Pastor Dean Stahar, yung ganitong concepts, si Sam parang ha, ganun pa siya, parang ha. Now, siya na nagbibring up nung kanyang, ng word ni God sa, sa heart. And I'm just really so happy because, you know, God's word is, you know, living inside you. And tama ka eh. It's really like, for example, uh, the Ten Commandments is just the letter of the law. It's really understanding the spirit of the law. It's really understanding God's heart. Am I living for God? Am I just being nice or I'm being charitable, kind, loving? Am I forgiving? Nice ka nga, pero yung, yung amount of unforgiveness mo sa heart mo, sobrang dami, di ba? So, tama ka eh. It's really, um, you have to measure yourself to the measurement of God. Kung parang, how, ano yung, alam mo ba may isip na term ngayon? Kung, Sa, car, sa companies, may KPI, di ba? Key performance um, indicators or para ma-base mo kung maganda performance mo. So, are you um, gauging your life sa KPI ng mundo or sa KPI ni Jesus? And right. I'm pretty sure my brothers can expound on that even further. So, which I brother is it going to be? Okay, Mr. Harry. <laughs> okay, okay, let me try. But yeah, I remember there was an episode that we already talked about this, I think even with a celebrity guest. Well, anyway, um, there's a difference between the good of a standard in the world and the good as the standard of God because being nice, being kind to people, that's basic, especially for us believers or Christians. And so um, I want to quote Jesus in Mark chapter 10, verse 18, when uh, he mentioned that no one is good except God alone. So um, going back to that, God should be our standard of being good. And uh, just like what I've mentioned a while ago, God is the word. And in order for us to know this standard, we also have to know the word. I remember uh, I heard that from a pastor before, and I would use that as an inspiration on what I'm about to say. Bible can be like an acronym of basic instructions before leaving earth. These are the things that you have to do inside the Bible are the things that you have to do before you leave earth because our destination is heaven. And uh, and, uh, it's important for us to understand the Bible in order for us to achieve this. So let me give you maybe an example to explain it um, better. Na magkaiba talaga yung standard ng tao sa standard ng Diyos. At the time of first coming, remember what Jesus did? Like he flipped the tables in the temple. He actually um, said harsh words to the Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of the law that they are a snake, fruit of vipers, they are a whitewashed tomb, so many things. In the standard of the world or in the eyes of the people, it's bad, it's evil. But we know that Jesus, in the standard of God, he is blameless. He is upright. And that's why uh, my point here is, in order for us to be good in the eyes of God, we have to understand God's word first. And through that, we'll be able to do what is according to the measure of God and not with our own measure. Yes, yes, that is what I meant when I said, parang hindi yun yun lang, guys. Parang may something pa. Yun yun. Yes, Pastor Neil. Yeah, so thank you, Instahari, for that. And maganda yung shinare mo, Sam, no? Like, in whose standard in terms of yung good works? And I remember in the scripture, sinabi, di ba, our good works are just like 
filthy rags in the eyes of God. Di ba? So, no matter anong good works yan, hindi. Kaya, dun, dun tayo grateful because even with our good works, hindi pa rin sapat. That's why Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. Kasi good works is not enough. It's really because of our faith in Jesus Christ. He lived the life na he, uh, we should have lived and died the death we should have died. So, dapat tayo yung, <laughs> yung magsasuffer ng consequence. So, pero dahil love tayo ni Lord, uh, of course, j- ano rin kasi siya eh, He's also just. So, that's why, kaya siya yung namatay not us or at least spiritually speaking so nangyari of course we are dead to sin so just to 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 cl- clear it we are dead to sin kumbaga we are spiritually dead because of our sins but because of what Jesus did on the cross then then yun yung ano natin we for salvation and I remember in Ephesians 2 8 and 9 uh, for it's by grace diba, you have been saved through faith it is not on your own it is a gift of God not by works so that no one can boast so kumbaga good works at least on how I understand it and in a Christian faith is good works is not a means for salvation but it's a byproduct of that relationship with God so the more that you get to know God the more that you are doing good works so yun mm-hmm. so going back to that question so yung good works is not enough to save you but really the faith in Jesus Christ and you are doing good works as a result of that encounter with Christ. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I know this is a little debate between um, the Catholic uh, teaching and the, you know, our Protestant brothers and sisters. We kind of, um, I mean, but, you know, when I hear both sides, like, they both make sense. I, anyway, that's not what this episode is about. So maybe we'll reserve that for a future show. But point being, does that change things now? If you were, quote-unquote, a good person, if you were a kind-hearted person prior to committing this act, you know, do, but, does, but does that still, again, as we've just established, you know, by whose standard are we good? But then if we bring it to our first question, which is that, hey, but the teaching is that even if you uh, committed this, this act, it doesn't automatically mean that you go to hell. So it doesn't really change anything, Right. To bring it back to Carmela's message. Yes, but also we don't want to encourage them that since it will not change anything that we will do bad, we, we still have to be good just like what Pastor Neil mentioned. It's a byproduct of the grace that we receive from God. Of course. Yes, yes. Right. Okay, so to wrap things, Carmela, um, and answer your question again, uh, none of the churches here or I don't think this is the Christian teaching that anyone who takes their own lives automatically merits hell. The ultimate decision on that is with God, obviously. Um, and I hope it helps you that we heard from Brother J. Paul, Pastor Neil, and Sahari, who are church leaders, but have honestly told us that, hey, this is a struggle for us too, but it's only God that carries us through this difficult time. And I just realized that I'm wearing the perfect shirt for this episode. Life is good. Amen. When God is in it. (laughs) When God is in it. Okay. Um, Thank you guys for having this conversation with me to answer Carmela's question. And I hope Carmela, that helps you. I hope you, I'm so glad that you've recovered from this condition. And for opening up to us and sharing us, sharing with us your story, and also you guys for opening up about you know how you guys are handling this this ECQ season three. Yes, Insta Harry. Um, maybe before we end, I just want um to say to our listeners, if you are going through these difficult times, if you if this is one thing that comes into your mind, don't hesitate to reach out to people. Um, there are hotlines, there are groups who would want to help people struggling, especially those who are depressed or going through a lot and are thinking of killing themselves. So don't hesitate to reach out. Don't hesitate to ask for help. 
And uh, just like what, um, what I think we were able to establish in this episode, that even as church leaders, we also struggle on our own. Life for me is an everyday set of choices that you have to make. Ulam palang or what you want to eat. <laughs> diba? It's always a choice. Or even, kakain ba ko or hindi? Should I work or should I not? But if I just, if I would just go back to the scripture at the time of Moses, um, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, it says that in front of us, that's life and death, blessing and curse. And what God would want us to choose is the life. And that's the same thing. I, I just want us to, before we end this episode, that I would want to encourage every one of us who is listening out there to always choose the better option, to always choose God, to always choose life. And even though life is so tough, we just have to hold on to him and never lose hope. Wow. Yeah. Can, yeah. Can, I add, can I add with what Instahari said? So, uh, if you are facing that, so please don't face that battle alone. So please seek help. And also, uh, kasi in our in our country, kasi like seeking professional help may stigma. Eh. So please, if you feel like yun na yung kailangan, please go ahead consult a uh, professional help. Kasi ako na na or at least tayo that God can heal. Sometimes miraculously in an instant, but there are times magpapadala siya ng mga doctors. So please yes. do not be ashamed. Uh, please, please, uh, wag mong harapin mag-isa yan. Amen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Amen. Oh, thank you so much, guys, for giving us hope and helping me wrap this on a high note. Um, and actually, this is what uh, Pastor Neil does on his YouTube channel. It's all about content that instills hope, that inspires. So please check him out on YouTube and you can find him on Instagram as well at Neil Germo. And of course, the details for Insta Harry and Brother Jay, they're all in the show description. So again, gentlemen, thank you for having this conversation with me and thank you to Carmela for writing to us. And if you want to do the same, you can do that by emailing us, the narrow door podcast at gmail.com. Please be safe. Take care, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Take care, because I care. Bye.